let me just tell you for 20 seconds uh, a little bit about my history of medical. I started uh, back in 2002. I've been there for uh, uh, going on, I think, will be seven years. For those of you who don't know, uh, the facility in Waterloo has existed prior to that time in Mitra Imaging. And primarily, we're a, uh, a company who's involved with not only the uh, acquisition and management of the images that occur when you see people getting CAT scans and MRIs, and uh, chest x rays and all that stuff, it's a lot of managing all the information around it, managing the workflow that goes around it, and also managing the, the results of those things. So, our, the people we serve are the people who are basically serving patients. So, today I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of the state of the art in, uh, in healthcare and the problem statement that. The healthcare industry needs to solve, and Ang is very interested in your uh, ideas and thoughts as it relates to that. So, uh, a couple of things to know. In today's modern healthcare, when you watch TV, and it frustrates me to know, and you often see these people going down the hallway of these TV shows, and they have all the modern latest IT stuff, and yet they grab a piece of film and they hold it up to a light. Most modern hospitals do not use film anymore. In fact, we were originally a film company, and now we're an IT company. Those images, much like your cameras, no longer process film. The state of the art is everything is digital. Your images are acquired digitally, and within seconds, some, uh, a trained professional, a radiologist, a trauma surgeon, somebody's looking at your images, and they start to act in minutes rather than hours. So this is how we change people's lives. The problem is that even though we've got those images digital, and the storage of those is, is, is digital, much of the human interaction around that, much of the steps are still manual. People are still getting pieces of paper and saying, go to floor seven. Take this piece of paper, go home, bring the piece of paper back on Wednesday, and we're going to do some more stuff. And when you give me the piece of paper, I'm going to write something, and I'm going to give it back to you, and you're going to bring it back again. The workflow and many of these things around this type of innovation is still very manual. The second thing is, part of the problem statement is, it's designed for the healthcare industry. Patients often get results from these systems, and they're not in context of what it is they need or they need to understand. So it's rife with terminology, processes, steps, things that mean things to the healthcare infrastructure, but don't mean things to the patient. And it's often up to, in the, in the old days, your doctor would say, take two of these and call me in the morning. Nowadays, you get symptoms, you get things, and you go and you learn about what does that mean? What are my options? Because information today is ubiquitous, it's much more available to us. So this is essentially what we want to talk about. And I'm actually going to share a couple things. I'm going to actually show you some of my medical records that, that um, uh, were generated in a, in a recent week. Back in 2006, I developed a pain in my neck. And uh, in reality, it was, turned out it was because I was sitting on a computer for too many hours without any exercise. So keep that in mind. Um, so this is a little bit about my experience. So I, I, I go into the clinic. I wait in the, the waiting room there. And this was right at Christmas time. I couldn't get an appointment, so I went into the walk-in clinic. You may, many of you probably encountered the same thing. And uh, I have to fill out a paperwork so they determine how, whether my priority is. And then I go in and they meet with me, ask me a few questions. Okay, go get an x-ray. Gives me a piece of paper. I walk down to another area and I get, uh, they say, okay, give me the piece of paper. I get a piece of paper. They do the x-ray, give me some instructions. I go back and uh, I go home. So then I get a call several days later. I think it was like a week or two weeks later. It says, oh, come in. So I go in uh, and they said, basically, the results are back. And here are the results. It, it's because you're uh, a lazy bugger and you spent too much time on a computer. So I said, can I get a copy of the report? Because I happen to work in this industry and I understood all these things. And so I have to actually have a copy of that report. So uh, there, if you think about that transaction and you compare it to other types of transactions, which I'm going to talk a little bit about, with other industries, that's a very manual process. And it also puts a lot of burden on the patient to do many of these steps where it's not necessary. For example, why can't I? Today, I can go on Google and I can see where's traffic on maps. But how come I can't tell which of the clinics, the three clinics that are about the same distance from my home, has a longer wait time? It doesn't exist. Why do I have to go in and fill, like literally a sheet of paper, which by the way has all the other patients' names on it, write down stuff information on it and have it sit in a queue on a wall? Why can't I come in, swipe my card? Today, I can go into a hotel and I can swipe my, my points club card. I'm registered. I don't touch another thing. They've already got my room ready, they know what my, they've assigned my points, they've already got me registered, I don't type anything, they don't sign anything. Why do I have to take the order? Why do I have to be the one who takes it down? What if I lose that piece of paper? I show them, I'm supposed to get something, but I don't know what it is, I couldn't find the paperwork. The reason I do it is that I am the most motivated person in this whole chain. 
I'm the one who cares the most about what happens to my neck. So they know if they give it to me, it's the most likely chance I'm the least likely one to screw up and lose his paperwork. Um, when I go to the imaging clinic, I ended up waiting there as well. Why can't I choose, why can't I automatically choose which one's the closest when I'm going to this clinic and tell me which ones are available in the imaging clinic, which has the longest wait, shortest wait time? Why can't I online book? I could do that with uh, bus tickets, almost anything. You can buy things online, you can schedule things online. No, I have to go and I have to wait, and I have no idea what time to go. Um, why do they phone me when I come in? Almost all their all other industries gives me the choice. Do you want to be text message? Do you want to be email? Do you want us to phone you? How do you want to, how do you want your service to be provided? I'm going to show you an example of, of, of what they did there. And then they give me my big piece of paper on my report. Now I have a record of it, and that's fantastic. But where is this being kept so that if I have another issue, that this information is available? And I'm going to show you an example. And then what do the results mean? I read through it, and I'm going to show you some of the language that they use and some of the ways that they describe things. It told me, the consumer, the patient, almost nothing about what was really happening. Why is this? Many times healthcare services, like other service industries, they localize it around where they can get the equipment and the skilled resources, and they put it there. And hopefully, if you're lucky enough, they put it near your community where you live, so it's not that uh, difficult to get to. But it's not centered around the patient. And many of the systems, because the healthcare service system is paying for it, they're designed for them to help them, not for specifically to help the patient. And obviously, healthcare, you've all seen uh, ER, all these things, they use a lot of words that a lot of people don't understand and don't need to understand. And there's an inherent complexity to the human body and to the disease and, and to managing those things. So these things become very difficult when they're, they're talking one language and then we, we speak another. So if we look at some of these other options, travel services, I can click on today and I can find out all kinds of information on multiple data stores instantly within seconds. I can't do that with healthcare. The uh, airlines can send me a text message if my flight's going to be delayed, I sign up for it. But healthcare doesn't tell me if there's a change to the, if there's a, when I'm supposed to get my CT, I'm going to be waiting two hours so I can decide to uh, do something better with my time. I can transfer money to anybody in this room. I'm not going to do that, but if, if, uh, through an email money transfer. So this is trusted information, and it's easily and securely done between interbanks with an email today. I've done it, yet health records are very difficult to exchange between two hospitals. They, you know how they do it? They give you the information, say, go take it to them and give it to them. Because again, uh, the health systems don't always integrate the data, and I'm the most motivated to get it right. Insurance can be tracked online, everybody understands that. So this is my report, this is what this problem with my neck. So just so everybody has a context, there's a very basic transaction in healthcare. When you go in and you see your clinician, your general, your GP, your family doctor, and you describe some symptoms and they want some imaging done, they will then order an exam. They may send you for an ultrasound, they may send you for a chest x-ray, uh, CT, MRI, there's a, there's a dozen different kinds. And when those images are done, there's a very specific doctor called a radiologist who looks at those images and is trained to understand how to read what that image says and then provide a diagnosis or what they believe is the next step. Like, this appears to be something, get a biopsy or do the next step. Or we recommend a different type of image exam to confirm. So this is essentially a very simple thing. And, then, and their basic, their, their product is the report, the radiologist report. And this is an example of one. They come in different forms, but this is an example one. So the, one of the points about this is that it is actually intended for a communication between one trained physician and another trained physician. Little known secret, if you talk to these people, which I do, they will often tell you, even the doctor who's receiving it half the time doesn't know what some of these words mean, and they have to go and check them themselves. Mm -hmm. So even though today we're talking about, and we'll be talking a little bit about how some of this terminology needs to be translated and put in context for the patient, even doctors are missing that. Right? Of course, you've never seen it because no doctor.